Just wanted to quickly say as a disclaimer that this video has opinions, uh, some potential facts that may be not fact checked, anything potentially could be inaccurate, uh, stuff that you may disagree with and stuff like that. So if that's something you're not a fan of, you can click off the video, but either way, enjoy the video. Today we are going to be talking about top my top 10 foods I do recommend eating. A lot of these you probably already had, but either way, these are some of the best foods I've eaten and food that I continually eat because of how much I do enjoy the food. I'm a foodie, I'm a fat ass, I am a food lover. Anyways, let's get into it. All right, I just like to read some comments that uh, I was using to help me make this video. And yeah, so this comment by Ryan Badin. Uh, I just hope I've said that right. It says, great concept. You should try getting a better mic and, st and stick to a text, though, as it's sometimes really hard to understand what you think is bad about the food. Yeah, and I completely agree with that. And I just said thank you for the input. And you know, any comments, any likes, any support uh, means a lot to me. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. And yeah, that means a lot. And this next comment by 7chicken uh, is what inspired me to make this next video, which you're about to watch. And he says, can you make 10 foods you do not, you do recommend? So yeah, I is what I, this is what I did for that video. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you, 7chicken, for the, the, the recommendation. Yeah, I will be making this video as you're about to watch it. I don't know why I said that again. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. At number one, we have pepperoni pizza. Pizza is originally from Italy and is usually made without pepperoni or like the American version as we know it. It's known as like the margarita style, if I'm correct. It's usually cheese, basil, tomato sauce, and then the crust, which isn't really necessarily bad. I have had it before. It's not bad. It's not what I prefer, but I prefer pepperoni pizza. Pepperoni pizza has like seasoning, sauce, pepperoni, like the dough, which is ends up being the crust and the cheese. The sauce is really good when it's made well. If it's not too tomatoey, if it's not too sweet, it has to be like just right. Not too sweet, not too savory, just like in the middle. And when the seasoning is done right, it makes a pizza smell really good and taste well. That is also important. If you don't have enough seasoning or the right seasoning, that can ruin the pizza. And then for pepperoni, that is really good too. Um, thick can be good, but usually I prefer like thin slices of pepperoni, nothing too big, just simple pepperonis. That's always perfect. And then for the crust, that is probably one of the best parts. Usually you can eat the crust. Not many people eat the crust, but if you do eat the crust, you know how good it is, especially if it's got seasoning such as like Domino's or Pizza Hut, any of the places that season their crust is, it's just perfect. And then the cheese, that also makes makes or breaks the pizza. If the cheese is too is the, the cheese is too, what's it? Let's say, um, if it's too sloppy, then it can ruin the pizza eating experience. If you know what I mean, like you don't want to have a messy pizza. You want it to be you want it to be drooping off of pizza. That's how you know it's a good pizza. But if it's too messy, then it's you know you get. You burn your hand and you get all pissed and whatnot. But yeah, that's what that's why pepperoni pizza is at number one. One of the places I would recommend is Mama's Pizza from Plano, Texas. It's a pizza buffet style restaurant, and here's a picture of one of their pizzas, uh, you know, freshly cooked. And then I have Durkin's Pizza, which is from Allen, Texas, which is also phenomenal. Great place, great pizza great environment I would recommend at number two we have popcorn one of my favorite snacks ever to accompany with movies sorry if that was weirdly drawn out I was just trying to think of something to say but yeah popcorn is really good especially when you get it at the theaters popcorn as we know it has existed forever we've had it since the caveman days and as evolution and time has gone on, we have made and perfected popcorn as we know it. We have microwave popcorn. We have popcorn you can make on the stove top using just the kernels or you, you know, like the Jiffy Pop. You can use machines, all that kind of stuff. 
and it's very simple you have the popcorn kernels and then if you add stuff to it that makes it way better you add butter you add salt and especially when you go to the theaters you get some of the best popcorn you can ever get sometimes people don't like it because it's unhealthy which is true but i feel like that just makes the appeal better whenever you're able to eat something unhealthy i'd recommend popcorn as it's not super high in calories even though if you do add butter and salt it may be but if you treat yourself have some popcorn so the salt and the butter oh my god the flavor is just like it's a simple soft and crunchy texture it's just amazing and also when you go to the theater they also have pretty cool popcorn buckets so that's also a plus but yeah that's why popcorn is at number two at number three we have sushi one of the yummiest foods you can eat that's just simple and it's really yummy okay maybe not simple because they can be hard to make but they're small and you know which makes them easy to eat you know and that's why they're tasty just realized that kind of sounded a little sus, but yeah, they are they are small, but that makes it easy to eat. All right, sushi is also really good. I just recently started getting into it like a few years ago. Uh, before I didn't really like it because I, I guess it just thought it wasn't for me, but you know, I've, out, over the years I've become less of a picky eater. And yeah, sushi is from Japan and it uses rice, seaweed, fish, avocado. Sometimes some of those are switched up a bit. I usually have sushi, I usually eat the maki roll, that's what I have, um, or any other version that's basically like that, but adds other stuff to it, you know, the, the usual crab, avocado, rice, and, you know, the little vegetable, like the celery or whatever else they add to it, or the cucumber. If you get sushi, get it from a good place, it has high rating, and I promise you, you will enjoy it. Anyways, that's sushi at number three, not ten, I had to re-record this bit, but yeah. Number four, we have mangoes. One of my... Uh, oh, God damn it, son of a bitch. All right, I'll just leave it in because it kind of sounds funny. But what I was saying was that mangoes are my favorite fruit. And I chose this as the first image because this looks kind of weird. But yeah. So we have mangoes at this spot because they're soft, chewy, sweet, and easy to eat. I like the flavor and the texture is not too overwhelming. You know, perfect. You can feed this to babies. You just gotta mush it up. You get anyone can eat this. Really, it's it's pretty simple, and it goes well with a lot of dishes, um, like a mango lassi or like using it in a, like a salad. I mean, some people do that, you know, or like a smoothie or you know stuff like that. But anyways, that's mangoes at this spot. Thank you. Here's two random images. One of this mango that's somewhat looking weird for some reason. Oh, what the fuck? Why did I say it like that? And this weird mango that's obviously made uh, using an AI generator. And for some fucking reason, it's fucking watermarked, which is fucking weird and cringe. At number five, we have, we have mole, mole con, con pollo. pollo. One this of my is favorite really dishes good. that I taste though not rice. have enough. Fuck, I need to record What it. I was trying to say was that it's a dish that I do not have enough. That I wish I could have more, but it's really good when you have it. Mole is... A sauce that accompanies chicken, and I'm used to the version that uses chocolate, like a chocolate cacao powder, um, nuts, seeds, and dried chili. That's the one I'm used to, but it's also it's a traditional Mexican sauce, usually on chicken, and it's accompanied, accompanied with rice, either like the Spanish rice or the white rice or, or beans, you know, just that also accompanies with some stuff like that, yeah. But anyways, that's mole at number five. At number six, we have elotes. Now this, this is my f one of my favorite foods. Everything else is really good, but this is so good, especially when you have it with a family. Oh man, those are just some of the best moments ever, dude. It's so good. Elotes also come from Mexico, like many of the other foods that are on this list. They're also traditionally sold by uh, street vendors, uh, any street food is usually good. Go support them. They're usually working for their family. They do their best. Uh, growing up, I did partake in some pirating. I'd buy bootlegs at this place called El Rancho. And at the same time, I'd also get some elotes because, you know, that should be bussing. And yeah, I just got a lot of good memories there. A lot of great food. 
just some good times there. And that's why I love it with this for the memories, for the taste of the food, and just the whole the whole vibe that comes with eating a lotus. Just a fun time with family. And that's why a lotus is at this spot. At number seven, we have agua frescas, but specifically platanos y fresas. And by the way, it's not fucking called spa water. So if you call it that shit, you fucking dumb. I love this drink, dude. It's so good. It's creamy. Nice milky taste with the strawberries and bananas. It's a good combination. I'd also get it at El Rancho. I also think it's way better than coffee. Um, so like, yeah. And that's Aguas Frescas, Platanos y Fresas at number seven. At number eight, we have tacos de carne asada. Now these, now these are actually probably, this is probably my favorite food. Because of how good it is, dude. These are the fucking bomb. I love these a lot because of the meat. It's like nice, crispy, chewy, brown, like steak meat, the cilantro, the onions, the sauce, the limes, and the tortillas. It's just a good food. It's also from Mexico and it's just, uh, traditionally sold um, like streets. You can get them at other Mexican restaurants, but if you can get them, at street vendors if you see people selling tacos on the street you should definitely cop some i promise you they'll change your life they're so good and that's tacos at number eight at number nine we have burritos okay i probably said that kind of fucked up but burritos you can eat these whenever for breakfast lunch and dinner and you can literally put anything in these and they're the fucking bomb as well these are really good too you can go to like chipotle qdoba you know, any burrito place or Mexican restaurant, usually the best. Anyways, that's burritos at number nine. To end it off at number 10, we have the Caesar salad. By the way, none of these are in a particular order. All of these are really yummy and tasty. And we also had to go healthy, you know, come on. We have to have something healthy, at least kind of healthy. And it's also tasty as well. Even though the salad is literally called the Caesar salad, ironically enough, it's not actually, it wasn't invented in Italy. It was actually invented in Mexico. The uh, Caesar salad, as we know, it was invented by this guy, Caesar Cardini, who is actually Italian. And here's an explanation saying how it was invented in Tijuana, Mexico. Now onto the parts that I like about the salad. The salad is just, it's just amazing. I uh, love the crisp romaine lettuce. It's so, it's so tasty. The croutons that also makes salad really good the parmesan and, and especially the sauce the tanginess and the sourness it's not so overwhelming and and that's what um that's what makes it really good the, the combination of those and yeah anyways though that's the caesar salad at number 10. well i hope you enjoyed the video oh god damn it my fucking brother